What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a different kind of video. This was a topic that was actually suggested to me by a viewer, well kind of suggested to me, where they asked me to make a video talking about my favorite stories. Now, I figured a better format for this would be instead of just keeping it restricted to stories that are videos on this channel, I'll just talk about my five favorite drug experiences ever. Well, you know, no matter what substance they're on, no matter whether I like the drug or hate the drug, just the memory of it, right? The five best memories or funniest, most entertaining ones I have. So, hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. And also... The game I'm playing in this video is called Fantasy Star Online 2. And I'm going to get a bunch of questions about it because it looks like no other games I play on this channel. It's a free-to-play MMO game that I downloaded. It's pretty fun, dude. Uh, if you guys play this shit, leave your name in the comments or something. Let's add each other or some shit, dude. I need people to play it with. It's a fun fucking game, dude. You guys should try it out. It's literally zero dollars. But either way, without further ado, let's dive right into it. So... Coming in with my fifth favorite drug experience that I've ever had. Uh, number five would have to be my first time getting high. And I, I have a video about my first time smoking weed, but that's not what I'm talking about. Because my first time smoking weed, I didn't actually get fully, like, stoned. I At the time, I thought that's what it was, but I didn't. And for those of you guys out there who smoke, you know that some people don't actually really get high their first or even their first couple times, right? On this particular incident, I'll give a brief little recap. Uh, I don't think there's a video about this one, but I, I think I've told I think I've told this on stream. But basically, I had a couple friends, and I'd already smoked once before, and it was like literally the day after I'd you know smoked for the first time, or like two days after. And we were driving around trying to find a, sp a spot to smoke, right? Because we're a bunch of fucking high schoolers, so we didn't really have a you know like a house to go to. It's not like you know anyone had their own place. We would just ride around and look for like spots, you know. And we were driving around and we couldn't find shit because everything was closed. It was late at night. And we go to this park. And for some reason, we couldn't smoke in our buddy's car. I don't remember his reasoning because it, it was a really big SUV. This motherfucker was driving like his dad's like Yukon around, bro. Like really big SUV. But either way, we're sitting in his car and he's like, nah, we can't smoke in here, dude. Uh, but we could go like hotbox the porta potty, right? And us being stoned already, like, we were like, or er, us, some of them were stoned. I wasn't really stoned yet, but they were stoned. I was the most recent pickup, right? Them being stoned already, they thought it was a great idea. And me wanting to get stoned, I was like, fuck yeah, dude, let's go hotbox this porta potty. So we go stand in this porta potty in the middle of the night, shoulder to shoulder. And two of my four homies there are tweaking about their clothes smelling like weed, right? Because we were like young little sophomores in high school where like mom would have actually fucked us if we got caught, right? So two out of my four homies in this bathroom take off all their clothes except their boxers. So now it's four guys in the porta potty, two of which are half naked, and we're all passing one blunt around, dude. And of course, it's high school. So this one, like, ten sack blunt gets us all sent as fuck, dude. We're in Jupiter. And I remember after we left this porta potty, we go and we get back in his car, and we drive to this, like, pizza place. We, we go and place an order for some pizza. And I remember we, we didn't call in advance. We just, we drove thinking we could get the pizza. So we went, we sat there, we ordered our pizza and we waited for it. And I remember after we ate our pizza, the kid who was driving the car had to take everyone home. And I remember I was so high and having such a good time that I, I started crying when they wanted to take me home. I was like, dude, no, bro. Like, I'm having a good time. You guys don't want to hang out with me? <laughs> because, like, I didn't comprehend that they had to go. Like, I thought they were kicking me out. I was like, dude, I didn't mean to get this high, bro. Like, I'm sorry. And they were like, dude, we're not. No, dude, we'll link up tomorrow, bro. <laughs> and I was sitting there sad as fuck. I was like, damn, man, come on, guys. What the hell? But <laughs> that, that shit was hilarious, dude. That was one of my favorite ones. Now, coming in with my fourth favorite drug experience here, we've got one that I feel like a lot of you guys probably predicted would be on this list, and that is my first time tripping. Now, I'm not going to retell the whole story because we actually have an entire video about this. So the ones that I talk about on this list that have videos about them, in the description, they'll actually be linked uh, next to the number that they're ranked, right? So you guys can go, if you guys maybe don't know what I'm referring to in these, if there's a video about it, you can check the description, uh, and there will be one linked if there is, right? But the reason that my first time tripping is such a fond memory of mine is 
yeah, partially because, of course, it was my first time tripping and I had a wonderful time. But one of my favorite parts about the night was the walk home. I look back on it and I just start dying every time picturing myself doing it. Because I had to walk home from my buddy's house. Like, I popped this tab and then I forgot that I had to go home in the middle of the night. And I was tripping balls and I lived literally one block over from this guy. And it took me, like, damn near two hours to find my way home. Just wandering the fuck around the neighborhood, bro. And my phone was, like, damn near... I think it did die. Dude... I have no idea how I made it home, bro. Absolutely zero clue. But I found my way home. But holy shit, I was wandering like a lost fucking dog through the neighborhood, dude. And another one of my favorite things about that night and my favorite memories is I remember, uh, typically a lot of people say that you can't eat on acid, right? My first trip, that was not the case, dude. We were all tripping balls. And my buddy Jason, he goes over to the fridge and he's like, dude, my mom made this fucking meatloaf the other day, bro. I'm, I might smack on some of it. And I like wasn't feeling hungry. So I was like, yeah, dude, throw that in. That might be good. Whatever, if you want that. So he takes this fucking leftover meatloaf and he puts it in the oven and he pulls it out. And it's his huge tray, bro. Like it's enough meatloaf to feed a fucking whole like military facility, dude. A giant loaf, nevertheless. Of pure meat, may I add. Uh, but either way, he bowls this thing out of the oven eventually. Burnt the fuck out of it. I remember it being very crispy. A very crispy meatloaf. And we went to town on this fucking loaf, bro. Holy shit. He takes a bite of it and Jason's like, dude, you, this shit smack, bro. You'd love this. Now, Kyle didn't have any of it. He's known as Kevin in his videos. Kyle's his real name. I use his real name now because you guys have met him on stream now. So I figure, you know, I can just use that. But. Either way, uh, Kyle didn't eat any, but me and Jason, oh my fuck, bro, we went to town on that meatloaf. It was zero loaf remaining at the end of our smack sesh there, dude. The, this, the entire first trip was just hilarious. Like, looking back on it as someone who's done a lot of psychs, it's like, wow, I really, I did not know how to act. <laughs> that shit was classic, dude, an absolute classic. Coming in with the number three spot here. Now, this is one, I think I told this on stream fairly recently, but I, I don't think there's a video about this at all. I think I've also touched on this uh, very briefly in the past, right? But I, there's not like a dedicated video about this topic. But way back in the day in high school, my friend Michael from some of my more recent tripping videos and some of my really old ones, right? Uh, he, him and I used to be trip buddies and we had nicknames for each other, right? So we would, you know, my nickname was Jimmy Specs because I had glasses, right? His nickname was Ron Jenkins, right? And we, like, while we were tripping, we came up with these like aliases. We were like, dude, these are like our trip aliases. Like, whenever we're on acid, that's our names, right? So we would just roll with it. But on this same day, we were tripping balls and just chatting a bunch of bullshit in, in Michael's room while we're playing 2K, right? And at one point, the conversation gets over to like Samurai Jack, right? We're talking about like, like Samurai shit. And for some reason, we made the connection between Samurai Jack and Jack Black. Like, my best explanation for why this happened is because we were tripping and we remembered Jack Black being in Kung Fu Panda and just thought they were the same thing. But Jack Black had nothing to do with Samurai Jack as far as I'm aware. Did he? Were we right? I don't think he... I'm, I'm Googling this right now. I don't know if you guys can hear me typing. Okay, yeah. Jack Black had nothing to do with Samurai Jack. Okay, listen. I just had, I had to confirm, dude. I was like, wait, am I tweaking right now? Who knows? But either way, so we were talking about Samurai Jack, and we were thoroughly convinced that Jack Black was Samurai Jack. Like, we were just in belief of it, right? And we got on the topic of like, oh, it would be really cool to have like a samurai sword, right? Like a katana, right? So we're, we're chatting about it and we're going on the internet and looking up like places to find these fucking katanas, dude. And this has been a running inside joke between myself and Michael and uh, everyone who was there for like years now, dude. We talk about the katana all the fucking time, right? But we're, we're going through and we're looking on the internet. And we're all like so dedicated to the cause, bro. We are just finding the most affordable katana. We're breaking down prices. We're like, dude, if we split it three ways we could maybe do like 70 bucks a head you know save up a little bit we could get a fucking katana dude but that wasn't enough for us we wanted to get the katana and then because of samurai jack we wanted to mail it to jack black and get it signed to him right like we wanted to mail it have him sign it and then send it back to us so we could have an autographed autographed samurai jack katana even though jack black had nothing to do with samurai jack we we're just like dude we have to have this right so we're, like, going all over the internet trying to find, like, contact for Jack Black, bro. We're trying to find his, like, manager and shit, dude. And, of course, you can't, like, 
A, we were tripping fucking balls, so there probably was some public info on how to contact him, but we were just, like, I'm pretty sure we were literally just trying to find his personal phone number. Like, we were like, dude, go on, like, yellow, white pages or some shit, dude. Jack Black's number, it's gonna be on there, bro. Just find this shit, dude. We have to call him. But that's one of my favorite memories, just solely because of, like, how ridiculous the entire, like, scenario was. Like, if we actually bought a samurai sword and mailed it to Jack Black, what would have happened? I think that's a fantasy we should live out nowadays. Now that I'm a grown adult and, like, I wouldn't have to ask my mom for money to get a sword, maybe we should do that. Maybe I should get a sword and mail it to Jack Black and actually see what happens. That that would be kind of fun. I'm going to do that, actually, one day. Coming in with the number two spot is a video I made fairly recently, but I, I know for a fact a lot of you new reviewers definitely haven't seen this one. Going back to rehab. Now, you guys are probably going to be like, what, dude? You went back to rehab? I did. However... Not as a patient. I got called back into my outpatient rehab center by my former counselor to be a motivational sober speaker. Now, the problem with that at the time was that I was high as fuck every time I showed up, right? So the first time that he, like, called me in, I was kind of in disbelief about it, right? And there's a video about this one linked. There's a whole video about it uh, in the description, right? But... To sum it up, essentially, uh, I was having a little email exchange with my former counselor, and he just kind of goes like, oh, hey, you know, if you want, we, we would love to have you come back in and be like a like a motivational speaker for the kids, right? Because he thought I was some like big, like sober role model, right? Because I had just gotten off probation. Little did he know I was already getting stoned the last month of probation, dude. It, it didn't even take me to get off to get high again, right? And at first, I was, I was just going to ignore the request. But I thought about it, and I was like, well, I'm kind of good at speaking. And this could also be, like, a really funny thing just for me. Like, this could be, like, a me memory, right? Because I wasn't going to show up and, like, actually, like, just be a dick. I wasn't going to show up and be like, smoke kush, you know? I showed up and I actually gave a speech, right? I actually presented to these fucking kids. The problem was I was just stoned off my gullet the entire fucking time. And they're sitting there asking me all these questions like, how'd you, you know, how'd you stop smoking? I can't handle it. And I'm sitting there having to think, like, huh, how would I stop smoking if I did? Like, <laughs> And just throwing out answers. And I got invited back multiple times. This first time I showed up and I was way higher than even normal because I was just fresh off probation. So my tolerance was nothing, right? And after this first presentation I did, they invited me back like three or four more times. I did this numerous times and I showed up sent every fucking time. And eventually I just stopped showing up like because of myself. It's not like they ever found out or anything, but I would literally be in the parking lot hotboxing a blunt before I'd go in and they just wouldn't say anything or smell it. So hey, <laughs> more power to them, I guess. But that that's one of my favorite memories just because like, damn, dude, that that's hilarious, bro. They invited me back as a me. Imagine you guys right now sitting in rehab. You're like in outpatient. The counselor's telling you to get sober. And they're like, well, now we have our sober speaker, our sober motivational speaker. And they open the door and I walk in. I fucking walk in, dude. What? <laughs> like back then I was much smaller on YouTube. So I think I think it would probably like I got away with it every time. But nowadays I feel like eventually someone would recognize me. I feel like all you little you little druggy rehab kids all know who I am. Come on, dude. I was a druggy rehab kid, too. Yeah, I listen. I got the street cred in the rehab centers. All right. So they're going <laughs> to shit, dude. But either way, man, that that was definitely one of my favorite ones. And coming in with my number one favorite slash most memorable drug experience. This one is number one just because this is a story I'm going to tell my grandkids one day. Smoking crack after school. There's a video about this, but I assume the vast majority of you viewers out there have seen this. For those of you guys who haven't, I have a whole video, you know, talking about my whole experience doing this. But to sum it up, for those of you guys who don't know, basically one day I got off school and my buddies Ashton and Kyle came over to my house and Ashton had a bunch of cocaine, but we were bored of doing cocaine. So Ashton threw out as a joke, let's try cooking crack. We were laughing for about 10 seconds before we were all on Google looking up tutorials on how to cook crack. And it actually worked. We took a spoon, we took a lighter, we took baking soda and water. That's all it took to make a small, personal, like, one bowl dosage, right? We didn't, we didn't whip the pot or anything. We, we just went off a guide on the internet that showed us how to do it with a spoon. So we fucking did it, right? We fucking did it. And we smoked the shit. 
And this is my favorite memory, not because of the, the actual intoxication, not because of the high. This is my favorite memory because of just how fucking absurd this whole thing is. Like, me right now, I would not go cook crack again if I had an excess of coke right now. Are you kidding me? That's one of those decisions that only a really irresponsible, drugged-up high schooler would ever make, dude. And it's one of those things that I know I'll probably never do again in my life, but I can say, hey, I cooked my crack, and I smoked it. They're gonna say, man, you probably smoked some shit crack, goblin. No. I procured it myself, dude. It was good. I handcrafted organic crack, dude. Y'all don't know shit about that. Y'all be put, using hormones and fillers in your crack, dude. My rock is organic, bro, so I don't want to fucking hear it, dude. That One day, my grandkids are going to cut all contact with me when I tell... Or my, my kids will cut all contact, contact after I tell my grandkids that story. That's fine with me. That's worth the trade-off, dude. 110%. But either way, that's just a quick little video coming in talking about my five most memorable or favorite substance experiences, whichever way you want to put it. Hope you guys did enjoy this video. Let me know if you guys would like to see more videos in this style, and let me know if you guys have any suggestions for video topics as well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.